What's up everybody, I'm Matt Gary, and in this episode of Coding with the Force, we're gonna find out what class instantiation in Apex is. We'll figure out what it is, why it's important, and we'll do an example of it together. All right, everybody, welcome back to this Apex Masterclass tutorial series. Today, we are gonna go over class instantiation. Now that we know what a class is, what a method is, what a constructor is, how all that kind of stuff works in Salesforce, we're gonna figure out how to actually use those classes that we've made, right? So um, now that we know how to create classes, how to make methods, well, how do you actually use the methods and the classes that you've created, right? Um, it's kind of one of the most important parts. And if you don't understand what instantiation is or how to do it, then you can't really even use your classes, right? So let's figure that out together. But before we do, make sure to like this video if you actually enjoy it, because it helps get it out to other people just like you who want to learn Salesforce for the first time for free, right? So if you enjoy it, make sure to hit that like button. That way, others just like you can benefit from this video too. All right, let's get back to it. First, let me just explain what class instantiation is. We've done it several times in this tutorial series already, but just to explain, we have this class that we made in the last episode called the computer constructor example, right? So this is a class that we created together. It's an Apex class. We wrote with our own two hands uh, or something and um, you know, we've, we've built this ourselves. <clears throat> and we want to be able to essentially use the logic that we've built in this class, whatever that logic might be. Over here, you can see I'm creating a new version of this class or I'm instantiating it for use, right? And so essentially what class instantiation means is I'm going to take my class that I've created here um, in Apex and I am going to, you know, essentially start it up, get it running and get it available for use, right? Um, so let's check that out. Um, we have our computer constructor example and maybe in here we want to make a method we've made methods before right so let's make a method together and we'll say public <coughs> string it's going to return a string that says uh you know start computer right and we'll essentially just say oops return computer is on or is running or something, right? I don't know. This is an extremely, extremely basic, uh, uh, you know, method here that's mostly useless. And in practice, you would pretty much almost never use something like this. But just for the sake of explaining what we're doing here with class instantiation, let's just make this very, very simple method. <clears throat> Okay, so now to be able to use this method, we need to do this class instantiation over here, right? So let's just build it together one more time. To instantiate our class, we first have to <clears throat> say, basically write the name of our class, right? Computer constructor example is the name of our class that we would like to create a new instance of or instantiate, right? So we're gonna say uh, new computer constructor. This right here is just the name of our variable that represents the class that we are creating a new instance of to use. And then we'll say, we want this to be equal to a new, uh, not that, <laughs> computer constructor example, right? Just like so. So remember when we went back 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 in the episode where we talked about 
um, variables and variable types and naming and all that kind of stuff. If you haven't watched it, head back there and check it out. So this is less confusing. But essentially we're saying we want to create a variable that is of type computer constructor example. So this class has now literally become a type in our system that we can initialize or use, right? So now we're going to say, all right, we want to create a variable that is of type computer constructor example. And we want to name that variable new computer constructor. And we want to set it equal to a new instance of our computer constructor class, right? So we're basically just saying, let's make a variable and set it in equal to a new instance of this class. Great. <clears throat> and this statement here, new computer constructor example, is basically saying, let's create a new class and call its constructor to build it, you know, the way that it's intended to be built. So now that we have this variable uh, that represents this computer constructor example class, we can now say new computer constructor, okay, computer constructor, and we can get access to the methods within it, our start computer method, for example. So <clears throat> um, and this gets equal to string, um, returned string equals that. So now, right, we can, since we've instanti instantiated a new version of our uh, class, um, we can call that method that we have within the class, right? And the one that we are currently calling is start computer. And start computer returns to us a string. So if we want, this is actually optional, but if we want, we can store that string that this method returns to us in a string in the in, you know in the code that is calling it. <clears throat> and then we can uh, take a look at what that ended up being by saying system.debug. This is the returned string. Like so. And uh, let's run this and see what happens. So we can see that everything compiled and ran uh, properly. Uh, you can see that the constructor that we built in the last lesson did um, run, and we got a gaming computer type up here. And we can see that we did indeed get the return string. Computer is running down here, right? So pretty cool. Essentially, when you want to use the logic in your class, in your code somewhere, you're going to want to initialize or instantiate a new version of that class, right? In this case, that's exactly what we're doing. We're instantiating a new version of that class and assigning it to a variable of the same type, <clears throat> of the type of that class, right? And then we're able to, through the use of this variable, call any of its methods that are public methods within it. Um, all right, so hopefully this kind of makes sense. I know the first time that you do it, it's going to be a little confusing. Um, some people more confusing than others, but stick with it, keep doing it, and I promise this will get easier, especially if you keep going along in the course. I'm going to explain all this stuff over and over, and hopefully um, by the end of it, all of this will make um, way more sense than the first time you're doing it, which is maybe right now. So, all right, guys, um, that is it for this episode of the series. I hope I'll see you in the next one.